In 2015, Pixar Studios released their film, The Good Dinosaur, an original film from the company. The next two films released by them were Finding Dory and Cars, both sequels to popular Pixar franchises. After Finding Dory and Cars, the next film to be released would be Coco, another original film. The next two films after Coco would be The Incredibles 2 and Toy Story 4, released in June of 2019. In March of, 28, of 2020, one of the last films released before the pandemic was the film Onward, released on March 8, 2020. Now, based off of the pattern that we've just seen, should the next Pixar movie be a sequel or an original? So for us to figure out what seems likely, we need to use logic. And this is Geometry. I'm Mr. Peacock. So to start with, we're going to talk about inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is based on observations. It is based on past experience. So you've seen things. You've experienced things yourself. It moves from a specific observation to create a general rule. It's useful in providing conjecture or hypothesis, but it doesn't always lead to a valid conjecture. It can be proven wrong by a counter example. So let's go back to our example that we were using of Pixar. So Onward once again was released in March and the next film, which was supposed to be released in June, is Soul. It is now scheduled to be released in November, theoretically. You will note that this is a original film. That means that they are not following their pattern. So let's see about some others and see if we can at least figure out what the patterns would be. You go to a movie theater. The posted times for City Lights are as follows. At 10 a.m., 11.15 a.m., 12.30 p.m., 1.45 p.m., and 3 p.m. What should the next showing be? So using inductive reasoning, we would look at each of these and ask, what is the difference in time? And each time it is going forward one hour and 15 minutes. So if we wanted to know what our next showing would be, we go one hour and 15 minutes from three, which would get us to 4.15 p.m. Now, in reality, should you ever just go up to a theater assuming that the pattern's going to stick? No. A lot of times theaters change in the afternoons. But that is how we would use this pattern. Next, here's our next pattern. A, 4, C, 8, E, 12, G, 16, blank, blank. So this has two separate patterns with it. A, C, E, G. Does anyone see the pattern? That's right, it's skipping a letter. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I would be the next letter. Now let's look at our numbers. 4, 8, 12, 16. What's our next one? Well, what's happening here? It's going up 4 each time. So what is 16 plus 4? 20. So inductive reasoning would say I, 20. Now we have our last bit of inductive reasoning. 1, 2, 4. What are the next two numbers going to be? I'm going to give you all a second to think of what you would answer. Okay, I feel like that's good enough. Now, some of you might have been going with this times 2, times 2, and if you're multiplying by 2 each time, that's going to get 8, and then 16. But did you know that's not the only pattern you could have seen? There might even be more than these two, but the pattern could have been plus 1, plus 2, at which point the next one would be plus 3, or 7, and plus 4, or 11. So it could be 7, 6, 7, 11, or 8, 16. So inductive reasoning oftentimes doesn't give you as much information as you think it does. 
you always need to be careful in life or in math when using inductive reasoning. So now let's talk about deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is based on facts, definitions, postulates, properties, and theorems. It moves from a general observation to a specific result. So while inductive reasoning is, you see this seems to happen, whenever we have deductive reasoning, we know the rule, and then we use the rule to figure out what will happen. It is useful in proving conjectures. And it always leads to a valid conclusion, providing your assumptions are true. If you have bad data, even deductive reasoning will give you bad results. So let's look at this and decide if it's inductive or deductive. So you observe that for the last five or six weeks, the school cafeteria, this question was obviously written in the before times, has served chicken on Thursdays. Since tomorrow is Thursday, you can conclude the cafeteria will serve chicken. So, in this case, this would be which one? Well, because we aren't basing this off of a school calendar or a stated rule, but we're just basing it off of something we noticed, they could not even realize that they had accidentally created this pattern. And so, it would be inductive. Next one. One of your car's tires is inflated to 40 PSI. Since the side of the tire rates the maximum tire pressure at 35 PSI, you conclude that the tire is overinflated, like my ego. So in this case, what we have to look at is we have to ask ourselves, is this inductive or deductive? Well, we are basing it on the rule of the stated amount in the tire at 35 PSI. Since we are basing our 40 PSI off of this rule, this would be deductive. Finally, Bob the Big Bad Boxer has won his last 11 matches in less than five rounds. You conclude he will win his next match in less than five rounds. The simple fact is we can't guarantee this. We notice it, and it does seem like a very clear pattern, but we don't know if there's some sort of reason. It's possible Bob the Big Bad Boxer got his name because he boxes children, and now he's going to face an adult. Or it's possible that Bob the Big Bad Boxer has just switched weight classes. We don't know. Or maybe he's just been fighting people that were very bad at boxing, and the next one he's going up against someone who is very good. Either way, even though it seems like a pattern, we have to call this inductive reasoning. And that's it for inductive and deductive reasoning. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hey, you see that like and the subscribe button? I want you to be like the Hulk and smash. Also hit the bell for notifications, comment, all that jazz. Hey, I'll see you later. Bye.